Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu salam ala mauthi rahmatil alamin nabiyyina wa habibina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Amma ba'd al yawm al thani min shahri Ramadan al thani wal thalith. Al thalith. Oh, today we fast in number 3. Allahu Allah Akbar. Uh, الثالث من شهر رمضان 1442 الموافق ل ل 15 من شهر uh, uh, April 2021 بإذن الله تعالى we we'll continue with uh, what we have had begun on uh, Tuesday which is the tafsir of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have chosen uh, surah al-kahf to deal with uh, in this month of Ramadan so uh, day before yesterday when we uh, started, we uh, did the introduction to uh, this uh, tafsir. Insha'Allah, I will move uh, forward. Bi'idhnillahi tabarakwa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu aywaja. Qayyiman li yundhira ba'sin shadidan min ladunhu wa yubashir al-mu'minin al-ladhina ya'amalun al-salihati anna lahum ajaran hasana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised himself. And yesterday I had mentioned the reason why this praise is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْأُولَى وَالْآخِرَةِ وَلَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. That's the ula. وَالْآخِرَة And also in the akhirah. So I tried yesterday to extract some of these uh, uh, reasons and wisdom behind this, uh, uh, I mean, specifying of the, the praise to be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life and the hereafter. And what I was mentioning last time, it was actually nothing and insignificant uh, in relation to uh, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us cannot be counted. If we sit down here just to discuss the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us, we cannot count them. You know, what we know is beyond our comprehension also. If we sit down to, to think about what we see, you know, it is going to be beyond our comprehension. What do you think about things which we don't see them, you know? We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten us, to tell us about, about them, but they do exist. They do exist. Uh, so when he says, Alhamdulillah, Every Muslim understand that, yes, Alhamdulillah. And he's the only one who deserves it. One of these blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that, Anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lamma ja'allahu iwaja. And yesterday I told you a, a bit about this abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why the, 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 the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Muhammad to be the final prophet is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on, on us. You know, look at his history and look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his life from A to Z, you will understand what I'm talking about. If you study the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will understand that yes, you Allah sending the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ni'mah for humankind. And you being part of the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ni'mah as well. Nobody will understand this except somebody who study his history and live especially in Jahiliyyah and then come to Islam, he will know that yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke the truth as he always, uh, I mean, uh, uh, does speak the truth. You know, when he says, ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin, we have never sent you except mercy for the humankind. A Siyuti or one of the scholars when he sends this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said a few lines of poetry. He says, وَمِمَّا زَادَنِي شَرَفًا وَعِزَّةً وَكِدْتُ بِأَخْمُصِي أَطَعُ الثُرَيَّةً دِخُولِي تَحْتَ قَوْلِكَ يَا عِبَادِي وَأَنْ سَيَّرْتَ أَحْمَدَ لِي نَبِيَا SubhanAllah. He said, one of the things that is making me so proud of myself whenever I remember them, I feel so honored, you know. He said, because of this uh, 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 nature that I, I, I usually be in whenever I remember these, uh, uh, these things or one of them, he said, Kittu bi akhmusi thuraya. He said, I feel like now I can actually jump on top of the thuraya. Thuraya is one of the father's star that exists. He said, I, 
Sometimes I, I, I feel like I'm so high, so great, so honored in the way that I can just now walk on the Suraya. He said, the reason why I have this feeling, it is just the remembrance that whenever you say, Ya Ibadi, my slaves, you know, he's speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever Allah says, my slaves, he said, I know that I'm one of these slaves. And also, you made Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah, to be my, my prophet. SubhanAllah. That's very nice poetry. He says, just to remember that my prophet is Rasulullah. <coughs> it's really great. It makes me feel so great and so honored. My question is, my dear brothers and sisters, do we have this feeling, you know, like this person. And he, honestly speaking, in most instances, no. Why do I say no? Because if you were to look at our life, you know, many times when we happen to make a choice, we tend to choose that which is other than the choice of Rasulullah And those who love Rasulullah they never go against him. They try their best to make sure that they are waqafin in the Amr al-Nabi They always follow him. They always stay away from that which Rasulullah so tell them to stay away from. So Allah says, Alhamdulillah alladhi anzal ala abdihi al-kitab. One of these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us uh, about, you know, which uh, necessitate uh, us and yani, praise in him. Annahu anzal ala abdihi al-kitab. He revealed the book, al-kitab is referring to Quran. He revealed the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best amongst the prophets and he gave him also the best of the books which superseded all the other books that came after it whatever you're looking for that you find in the torah you can find it in the quran waziyada and more and it's a guidance you know that's why the scholar said look at the munasaba you know the connection between this praise and the ni'mah of the revelation of the quran because with the Quran, many people were taken out of darkness of the kufr to the light of Iman. Many people are taken out of the darkness of fisk and bad manners to, to the light of good manners and Iman. Many people are, were taken out of depression, you know, depression to the light of comfort and success in life. Many people who are about to fail, the failure that they will never recover from it. Quran, you know, they were taken out of it by the power that Allah SWT granted this book of Allah SWT which he revealed to us. So if you look at it, since we're talking about Iman and righteousness that can lead a person to paradise, this would be the ultimate blessing of Allah SWT upon the humankind. And you Allah, only through the Quran a person can be guided in this life. You neglect it, you suffer in this life and go to the hereafter and face the worst. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشَةٌ بَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى So we have given you the book. It's up to you to take it. We place you on earth here for wisdom. And we give you guidance. We don't create you just to remain hamala. Hamala means sudan. Sudan means لا يُؤْنَالُ مَرْوَلَا نُهَا No command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no guidance. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us for this. So he gave us the book and said to us, whoever follow this book, will never get to be misguided and will never be in a state of difficulty and will never fail in life. But if you choose to stay away from it, Allah says, there is also another place for those who cho chose to stay away from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make this book bent. It is the most straightforward book, the most accurate book, the most correct book, you know, the most uh, accurate and perfect book is this book. Just look at the, the first uh, part of this book of the, uh, of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he uh, said Alif Lam Mim, he said, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Wallahu alam, they, they told me that somebody converted to Islam because of this ayah. Just because of reading this is the book that there is no doubt in it. 
This is the book that, that is the most accurate, which doesn't contain lie. They say this person says, usually when a person wrote the book, they s proclaim and say that, yeah, this book is Jud Insani. It's human effort. For sure you might find some, uh, some errors in it. He said the authors usually, I mean, those people, I mean, who wrote the book, they would tell you that that is a mistake. But then for the first time he see a book you know, which the book is claiming that there is no mistake in it, you know. That's what led him to study. And you will never find accuracy like that which you find in the Quran. Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ You Allah, in his guidance, in its uh, narration of stories, that's the most accurate. When the Quran says something, you will never find something different from that. So the Quran is straightforward. That's the meaning of the uh, I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very straightforward. Uh, the book that has no uh, mistake in it. I must yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to interpret He says yani Straightforward. No mistake. Uh, very straightforward in its indications. Allah says, وَلَمَّجْ عَلَّهُ عِوَجَ قَيِّمًا لِيُنْذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ Why Allah SWT revealed the Qur'an? For a purpose. The main purpose of the revelation of the Qur'an is to guide people to success in this life and the hereafter. And also to act as a warner. Because you have two different types of people. Some will accept it at the first time they were reminded. They will listen, they would heed the message. They will accept it, they will follow, you know, they don't mind, you know, sacrificing their enjoyment in this dunya because they know they are heading towards the ultimate success, you know, and the pleasure and the enjoyment which has no end, contrary to that which they live in in, in this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِيُنْذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا So that this Quran will be used by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to warn people about a very strong and a great hardship that will exist in this life and also in the hereafter for those people who decided to act as criminals. Criminals against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost and also against humanity. Because when a person commits sin, he is committing a crime also against the humanity. Because the fitna when it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not going to afflict him alone. It will include him and others who are found to be living in the place where he does exist. The Prophet Sallallahu talk about this fact. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, anuhu laku aw anahliku wa fina salihun. Are we going to be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but at the same time we still have the righteous people among us? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Naam, idha kathur al khabath. When evil is taking place and taking the lead in a place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the destruction, which will include everyone. You know, everyone has to go. SubhanAllah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ثُمَّ يُبْعَثُونَ عَلَى And then on the, on, the, uh, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make the segregation. Everyone will be resurrected according to his iman. So if there is a justification for a person being in that place where the punishment took place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take him out of it. He will not be included in the upcoming one, which is the punishment in, in the hereafter. If he has justification, but if he lives in a place without giving da'wah to those people and he has the capacity to guide them, but he did not, when the punishment comes, it will include him in this life. And also, in the hereafter, if he is not careful, he will be included also in the hereafter for not participating in giving the da'wah. You all know that, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the last part of Surah Al-Isra. You know, somewhere across the end of Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرِيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَاضِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعْدُونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِيهِمْ حِيْتَانُهُمْ يَوْمَ سَبْتِهِمْ شُرَّان وَيَوْمَ لَا يَسْبِتُونَ لَا تَأْتِيهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi to remind the Jew. SubhanAllah. The Jew, they didn't know what to do because they're dealing with somebody who knows them from A to Z. Much more greater than the way they know themselves. You know. Much more greater than the way they know themselves. You know. 
Subhanallah. He talks about them in the way they know that yes, they are dealing with Rabbul Alameen. You know. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us about their life, and He narrates many stories from their life, and He will tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remind them about this. So we have this city, Kanat Hawirat al Bahr, which is next to the to the sea. You know. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, as a Jew, a Jew cannot work on Saturday as a Jew. You know. That was a day given to them. They have to be off. You know, not in the way they lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say that this day should be a special day because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rest, you know, he rested on that day. God tell him Allah. You know. Some of them went out of their brain. They said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth uh, in five days, and in the, in the, the, I mean six days, and then day number uh, seven, which is Saturday, and then he, he rested. You know, a'udhu billah, a'udhu billah. That's why I never found in the creation of Allah SWT somebody who is disrespecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their words more than these entities. I've never come across something which is more disrespectful than their words. You know, you go to the Quran, the one who said Allah SWT is faqir, they were the Jew. The one who said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking for uh, money, you know, to borrow from uh, money after borrow from the people, they were the Jew. The one who said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his hand they are, they are folded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very stingy. They were the Jew. You go and see so many things, you know. And subhanAllah, regardless of all of these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still showed mercy upon them. But you're dealing with people who are ungrateful. So they look for the Saturday. Saturday was given to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost refuted them in that statement when they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rested. He said, wa ma we never get affected by the fatigue and weariness. Allah Akbar. Because what are, you ta- what are you talking about, you know? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? The creation of the heavens and the earth, all of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you want to do it, you just say to it, kun fayakun. Kun fayakun, you know? Anything that you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can just say to it, kun, be. And it is, you know? It's like there is a race in, I mean, race between the words kun and the action itself, you know. SubhanAllah. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you come and say uh, the, the creation of the heavens and, and the earth make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tired. What is this person talking about, you know? Look at the creation of the arsh, you know, and the kursi. Those ones did not make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tired. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala udu hibduhuma. Wala udu hibduhuma. Taking care of all of these, you know, and these two things, you know, the arsh and the kursi and everything, you know. Allah says, لا يؤدو حفظهما. It doesn't make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tired. What do you think about the creation of the heavens and the earth then? Because the heavens and the earth, if you put them all together and put them in the kursi, they would disappear. You cannot even see them because of the vastness of the kursi. How big it is. And that one, Abdullah ibn Abbas says, Mawdi al Qadamain, the place of the feet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Arsh la yuqaddur qadrahu illallah. The Arsh, nobody can give the right estimate of how big is the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except him. Eight angels are carrying the Arsh. Each and every one of them is beyond your comprehension. You know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You know, Allah has and allowed me to talk about one of these eight angels. He says that his feet started from the lowest level of the earth and his head goes beyond the heavens, you know, and reach the arsh there. And the arsh is on his head, you know, together with the rest of those uh, seven more angels. The Prophet said, I am told that if you are to travel from his shoulder, you know, the shoulder here, before you touch his ears, you spend 700 years. 700 years. You can imagine how big is this angel, you know. And eight of them, Allah SWT granted them the power to be able to carry the harsh. You know, the kursi that we say, if you take the heavens and put them in the kursi, you know, they will disappear because they will be like a ring in the desert. And the kursi itself, if you take it and put it in the harsh, it will disappear completely. SubhanAllah. And then somebody will come and say, it's be qillat al adab lack of manners, you know, and come and say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this, you Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken the truth. 
when he says about them, he says, ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. They never give the right estimates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life. Because the one who is having the right estimate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never say these words. So back to these people. So they, they were supposed not to do the, 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 the fishing and to catch fish. Because they are, uh, their job is to go and look for fish and sell it and, and live. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them with that. So on Saturday they cannot do anything. And it's just a matter of test. They were supposed to be patient and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove it. <coughs> Sorry. So on Saturday they see a lot of fish. Friday no fish. Thursday no fish. But on Saturday it comes. That's a test. These type of things they remain for a while. To see who will submit and who will not. They decided to play game with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will go with their nets and their traps, you know, and their bait or whatever. They will put it on, on Friday. Okay, they put it on Friday. No fish on Friday. And on Saturday, the fish will get trapped. They will not come and take it on Friday, on Saturday. They will come on Sunday and pick it up. Thinking that they can play the game with the last Mahatma. But in reality, since you catch the, the fish on Saturday. When did you work? The actual work was done on Saturday. <coughs> People in that city were divided into three categories. The warners, people who are advising people not to go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have the criminals who are going against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have the last one, the demotivators I call them. So the, the warners, the good ones, they started to remind the criminals not to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the criminals don't want to stop. At the end of the day, the demotivators started talking to the, to the good ones. Why do you waste your time? Why do you waste your time? You're advising somebody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to destroy them completely. And subhanAllah, listen to what was said by those good ones. They said, ما عذرتن إلى ربكم ولا علهم يتقون. They said, we're doing it for two things. For two reasons. One of them, ما عذرتن إلى ربكم. We are doing it uh, so that Allah SWT will see our excuse. To have an excuse to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because we want him to see that we participate in, in stopping them. And it is beyond our control because we cannot force them to stop. But we did remind them not to do it. So first we want to have our excuse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and secondly we don't know maybe they'll listen and this is also a great lesson for all of us because we are almost in most instances impatient you know when you talk to a person you know you're impatient you talk to a person and you ask him to stop doing something and this person is not willing to stop you know then we'll be, we, will, we will become qalili as sabr very impatient. We make a lot of comments, you know, these people, there is no good in them. This be Just because you reminded them once and they refuse to take. No, you should know that human being needs to be reminded from time to time. Sometimes the heart will be open and sometimes it is not open. You have to maintain your patience and keep coming from time to time. Use all forms of uh, method, you know. To see which one Allah SWT will make it activated for them to listen and accept you. Noah spent 950 years inviting his people. And never get bored. He used every methodology. Until the last minute when he complained to Allah SWT and Allah SWT took action. You know. So they said we are doing it for two, <coughs> sorry, two reasons. One of them is to have an excuse, an excuse. And also the second one is to try our best because we don't know. Maybe they will listen. Yesterday they did not, but today, what makes you think that today they will not listen? So what I needed from this story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذِكْرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءُ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَالَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says when they refuse, you know, when they refuse to accept the advice, and to take the da'wah, and to listen, and to stop going against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah said, We saved those who were reminding people not to go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
those people who are reminding others to be with Allah and not to go against His law, Allah says we save them. Which group is that? The first group. The warners, the preachers, the du'at, you know, the callers upon the truth. The truth. They were the ones who were saved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And Jaina al-Ladina and Hanan su. وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسَقُونَ And we destroyed, we hold those people who happen to be oppressors accountable of their evil deed. A very strong and harsh punishment afflicted them. They were taken away, all of them, you know. What about the demotivators? Because Allah says we saved only the one who, the one who is advising others not to do evil deed. How about the oppressors? I mean, those people who are not doing it, they don't do the crime in that way, but they demotivated the, the good ones. The scholars said most likely they were included in the punishment because they are also oppressors, you know, oppression of that nature. So, dear brothers and sisters, I decided to bring this story, which I believe most likely most of you already know it. But it's a great lesson that we need to remember, uh, I mean, to remember it all the time. That it is very dangerous for you to live in a place where people are committing crime and you do not remind them. And at the same time, you still live with them, laugh with them, enjoy life with them, you know. As opposed to migrate if you cannot remind people. So it's very dangerous to live a life without making dawah. Because when the punishment comes, it will include everyone. And on the day of judgment, the segregation is going to be based on who you are, your nature. It has to be according to what Allah SWT wants for a person to be saved in, in the hereafter. You might be tested in this life to be included amongst those people who are punished. But Allah SWT in the hereafter will make it as an expiation for you. Just like the plague when it comes for the righteous people, the plague is acting as, as an expiation. As the hadith of Amr ibn As or Abdullah ibn Amr uh, told us from the Prophet ﷺ, that it is shahada and kafara for those people who are righteous and punishment you know, and disgrace for those people who are criminals in this life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one of the purposes of the revelation of this book is لِيُنذِرَ بَأْسًا شَدِيدًا مِنْ لَدُنْهُ you know, to warn those people who decided to choose the way which is against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is against the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَرًا حَسَنًا Two things. One of them is to warn the criminals, and the second one is to give good news and glad tidings to those people who happen to be righteous. To the righteous people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an to give them good news. That with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have a better you know, reward which is Jannah. That's why he says, وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ And to give good news to the believers, those people who engage themselves in righteous deed, أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجَرًا حَسَنًا That they will be receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a great and a very beautiful reward. And that's Jannah. Some part of this is going to be uh, mentioned, inshallah, in the near future. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, decided for us even how to live. What kind of life a person is supposed to be having in this life? Who are the people that are supposed to be your friend? You know, this surah is really amazing. Even these, uh, you know, uh, small, 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 small details which are very important and crucial in our life. You know, very important and crucial in our life. How to make a right decision on choosing who to be with. The company, whether this company is a friend, your wife, your husband, you know, how to make a right decision and choose who to be, uh, I mean, along, I mean, I mean, going with you and side by side until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This surah did not neglect this part, inshallah. So when we talk about that, inshallah, we will shed more light on this excellent place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still referring to. So the two main purposes of the revelation of the Quran is to warn people and to guide people, you know. To warn and guide. You know, that's how much Allah SWT loves the humankind. So he says, Makithina fihi abada. And they're going to be remaining in that place of Jannah Abadan. Abada means forever. There will be no time whereby Allah SWT is going to take them out of paradise to somewhere else. Whoever goes to paradise will never come out of it. Never. There is no way for a person to be taken out of paradise. He will not be willing to come back. And Allah will never take him out. 
only person who will be willing to come out, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, is a shaheed. You know, those shuhada, when they see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala upon them, they will say, Ya Allah, just because we got killed in that life, you gave us all of these things. They will say, Ya Allah, we want to go back to the dunya so that we could be killed ten more times. You know, subhanallah. So Jannah is like this, it's a place of eternity. There is no way for a person to go out of it. And for the, for, the, for the criminals, when they go to hell, you have two types of hell. Two types of hell. The hell which we call Naru Usat al Mu'mini. The hell uh, for the, 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 the criminals that go amongst the believers, because we also do have uh, the people who are not righteous. They are Muslim, but they are not righteous, they are bad. That is a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take people like this. And you have also another hell, which is Narul Kufar, those people who committed shirk and died in shirk and died in kufr. The person who goes to the first one, Narul Usat al Mu'mineen, he will be taken out of it after the period Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for him, taken away from hell to, to paradise. This is the part of the hell. You know, that you will find a day, you know, where there is nobody in it, you know. Because according to the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, a believer will never remain in hell forever. But somebody who died in Kufr and died in Shirk, when they go to hell, there will be no time whereby these people are going to be extracted from hell to paradise or to somewhere else. There is no forgiveness, as Allah SWT says, concerning the matter of, of those ones. قَالَ وَيُبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this Qur'an to give glad tidings to the believers, الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ How can you qualify this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned two things which mark the qualification, qualification you know, for somebody who wants to be in this best place. الْإِيمَان وَالْعَمَلْ الصَّالِحَ الْإِيمَان وَالْعَمَلْ الصَّالِحَ the one who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also put his faith into practice and action and maintain his istiqama until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be given these glad tidings and good news. They have a very beautiful reward which is Jannah and they will remain in it forever and ever. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَى and this Quran is revealed also as a warner for those people who said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has a child. SubhanAllah. You know, human beings like to go beyond their limit. You know, how can a person you know, open his mouth and say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a child? And many scholars say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ref referring to the Arabs here. And the Arabs in the past, they used to believe that angels, they are, are the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know why it is so, 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 so uh, irrational, you know, it is rejected 100%. But to them, for them to say it, this is very disrespectful, you know. For them to say this, you know, if somebody say it, it's, it's enough, bad, you know, and useless. And the worst stupidity you can ever hear in, 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 in your life, you know. But if an Arab man say it, you know, among those people, who have that attitude which I'm going to be mentioning, it will be so strange. And it will really be uh, the highest disrespect that you can uh, do against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that? Because some of those one, they used to believe that having a girl is a curse. You know, is, is, is really, really, really a disrespect and evil thing for you to have a daughter. They really ha hate to have a daughter. You know. That's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْبِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ وَيَجْعَلُونَ لِلَّهِ الْبَنَاتِ سُبْحَانَ And they say, uh, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a daughter. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَذِيمٌ But at the same time, if you tell one of them that your wife got a newborn baby for you, and this baby is a daughter, ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you see this person, he will remain, his face will become dark, you know, and he will be sad throughout his day. Why is that? Because he has a daughter. Nobody actually will dare to give him this good news. People will be afraid of facing him to tell him that you have a girl, you know. 
because it's really shameful and disrespect and disgrace for you to have a girl in the house. You know, so silly. You know. How did they come? I don't know. You know. How did they come? If a woman doesn't exist, how? how, how? <laughs> that was okay. But they don't, they, don't, they don't, according to them, that was okay. That's fine. But to have a daughter, that's really bad. So Allah says, You will see him hiding from the eyes of the people. SubhanAllah. He doesn't even want to meet others. Because to him it's so evil for you to get the news that you have a daughter in the house. So throughout his hiding, he will be hiding and making decision as well. What is the decision, you know, uh, is based on? He is trying to finalize his decision. Is he going to keep this daughter in a state of humiliation and disrespect and disgrace? Or he just go and, and dig, a, the, dig a hole and just put her and bury her alive. You know that they used to do that? They used to dig a hole and bury them alive. And then subhanallah, somebody will come today and tell you that Islam was unfair to the sisters. Do you know that? We have some people who call themselves Muslims, but they open their mouth and say that Islam is oppressing what? Woman, you know. And they want uh, interpretation, new interpretation to those verses which are discussing the matter of the woman. SubhanAllah, you can see blatant ignorance, right? Nobody ever take sisters and the woman out of this tragedy, wallahi, except Islam. Go and read the history, any. History is there, well documented, you know. Go and read the history and see the status of a woman before Islam arrives. Who was she? Nobody ever, I mean, nothing, no system, you know, that considered her like anybody else in the community, like anybody else in the community, except Islam. And actually, not only that, respect them. The Prophet ﷺ died while telling people that I really warn you, you know, not to go against my command and my advice, you know, concerning the sisters and the Yatama. The Prophet ﷺ said, be gentle. And he said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, he was begging Allah to replace him, you know. Ya Allah, to look after the, the sisters. And he asked us also, everyone, to pay attention and be kind to them. The Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah bless you with two daughters and you show kindness to them, you are very kind to them. You give them good tarbiyah. The, the Prophet ﷺ said, Kunna laka sitra min Allah. They will be your protection against hell. All of these things, you know, if I decided to go through all of these mentions of the Prophet ﷺ and the status of the woman, I know everyone who has Iman, Wallahi, and see the status of the woman nowadays, you understand that, yes, nothing is bringing the sisters to the status where they are. In some places, they were like slaves, you know, except that they neglected the truth, which is the religion of Allah ﷻ, and as such, they chose to go back to the Jahili time, you know. In almost every nation, you don't find this respect, you know. You don't find this kind of respect until the time Islam came and put them in the position where they are. So the Arabs, they used to say that Allah SWT has a child. So Allah SWT says they will be thinking of how to make a decision. Can they keep them, you know, in a state of humiliation and disrespect? Or just go and bury them alive. But imagine this person who says having a daughter is a kind of disrespect and humiliation and disgrace. But then he opened his mouth and said that Allah has a daughter. It's not about, you know, Allah SWT having a daughter, but it's about he feels that this is the most, I mean, disrespectful thing that you can ha have in your life. But then he attributed to Allah Subhanahu wa So this word is so, I mean, bad, so evil. To say that Allah SWT has a child, whether you agree that Allah SWT is having a daughter or a son, both are said. Christian said he has a son. Some Arab, they said he has a daughter. The Jew, they said he has a son. Uzair is the Ibn of Allah SWT. They said, you have all of these lunatic fringes in, in this life. You know, wherever you go, you have these stupidities and idiocy, you know, being committed by, by humankind. And this word is so bad. Allah SWT says, تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتِ تَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّى The heavens and the earth are almost going to collapse. Why was that? Because somebody said Allah SWT has a child. The mountains, they are almost going to turn into dust. 
when the first person said Allah SWT has a child, this is the reactions by these creations. Because they know that this is really heavy. Creation of Allah SWT cannot handle that. You know. Allah SWT, anna yakun lahu walad. How is it possible for Allah SWT to have a child? How does it even make sense for Allah SWT to have a child? That's why Allah SWT says, ashahidu khalqahu. When they call angels to be the daughters of Allah, were they there when Allah SWT created them? Allah says, Satuk tabu shahadatuhu maysalun. Their witness, their testimony that they're saying now, Allah SWT says, it will be written, wa yusalun. On the day of judgment, they will, they will be questioned about, about this. Where did they get it? You know? So, wa yunzir al ladina qalu takhal Allahu walada. Those people who said Allah SWT has a child, Quran is acting as a warner for them. None of them has any knowledge about this. Allah never told anyone to attribute a child to him. Why did he get this information actually? That is uh, from the wahi of shaitan. You know. What an evil word. You know. What is more evil than the word that is coming out of the mouth which says that Allah SWT has a child. In you illa know. Allah SWT says, this statement is nothing but a lie being attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in these verses that the purpose of the revelation of the Quran is to act as a warner and also at the same time something which gives uh, good news to the believers, those people who are putting their iman and their faith into practice and action. So this is the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to introduce this surah. What is the reason why this surah is revealed? So I will take, inshallah, some part of this, uh, this reason, and then we close. Uh, maybe the explanation will come uh, in the next uh, class, in Allah Ta'ala, which is on Monday, in Allah Ta'ala. Ibn Ishaq, Muhammad Ibn Ishaq, he mentioned about the sabab uh, nuzul of this ayah, the reason why this, uh, this surah was revealed. So he says, Abdullah Ibn Abbas mentioned that Quraysh, uh, uh, Quraysh, uh, they sent a person called another Ibn al-Harith. There was a per person, another Ibn al-Harith, and the Uqbat ibn Abi Mu'ayt. These two entities were sent by the Quraysh to go to uh, the Yahud in Medina. Because the Arabs used to believe that knowledge is with the Yahud. Yahud, they were given the book, they have the book before them. So whenever they're confused about something, they used to send somebody to go to the Jews and ask them. Because they have the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before, before anybody else. So they sent to the scholars of the Jew in Medina. فَقَالُوا لَهُمْ سَلُوهُ عَنْ مُحَمَّدْ وَصِفُوا لَهُمْ صِفَتَهُ So they told Uqba and also another, and they asked them to go to the Jew and ask them about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa They said, please, when you reach the Jew, describe Muhammad precisely to them. His khalq and his manners and attitude. And see what would they react with? You know? They want the reaction and the answer from the Jew, whether he is the a true messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Tell him, tell them, you know, what Muhammad is saying to us, uh, because the reason why we sent you to them, because they witnessed the book before us, and they have a lot of prophets amongst them. They should know these type of things more than anybody else. They were right, actually. They were right. They know. And the Jew, they know. Actually, as Allah SWT says, They know the Prophet وسلم, more than the way they know their children. You know. One of them said, actually, I know him more than the way, really more than the way I know my, my children. He said, because I know him, I read about him, every single detail about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before I even know who my wife is going to be. He said, before I know my wife, I know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they said, you should tell them this because they have what we don't, what we don't have. قَالَ فَخَرَجْنَا حَتَّى قَدِمْنَا الْمَدِينَةِ So he said, we went out until the time we reached Medina. So I will stop here, inshallah, because I have already planned that this class will not exceed, inshallah, uh, one hour. So now we have only four minutes left uh, for question and answers. Uh, so let me uh, stop here, inshallah. I will uh, complete this uh, sabab. Quite an inter interesting sabab. Yeah, we really need to know this sabab. You know, okay, there is a great lesson which 
is one of the essence and the reason why the surah is revealed, to draw our attention about how things work in this life. And how are you supposed to, uh, to think when, uh, when it comes to the future? What kind of statement are you supposed to be uttering when it comes to dealing with the future? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and success in life and accept our deed and our fasting in the hubi kulli jameel and kafil. Barakallahu feek. Suhail, ilayk al maik. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Ameen wa iya. Sheikh. First question is from Sister Sada. Uh, I'm asking this on behalf of someone else. They say they feel like they are about to faint and she doesn't feel good. Is this uh, illness valid enough for her to break her fast? Yeah, if the feeling is in reality and as strong, uh, she has problem in life which uh, it, she feels like this. Yes, she can break her fast and go for medication. Uh, but it has to be a, real, uh, a reality. And I will advise her before she break her fast to go and uh, con consult a trusted medical doctor. Explain to him uh, the cause. Maybe there is another cause or there is a, or there is a way to cure that disease without breaking the fast. Hmm. Uh, the second question is from Sister Murmur. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. When, when we want to remind others to do good, and we feel weak to do so, what does one need to do? And recommended dua to read perhaps? Uh, they, they just have to remove these weaknesses. They must understand that it's very dangerous to stay away from this reminder. They should remove these weaknesses and go and face this uh, challenge. You know, when they do the first one, they do the second one, they do the third one, they will become familiar with it. I remember when I graduated from the Islamic University of Medina, this, um, the courage of giving da'wah is not that much there, you know. But when we deal with the hujjaj and hajj, you know, the first day was very tough, how to face people, you know, and uh, sometimes when I cross the people, before I reach them, I shed tears, you know, how am I going to talk to these people, you know. So we, we study the knowledge, but we don't know how to <laughs> sit down in front of people and tell them this is this, uh, that, you know. SubhanAllah, the first one happened, second one happened, and then it was gone. So that feeling was gone. So we have to face the challenge, do it first, second one, third one, then it will be removed completely. In situations where you cannot do it yourself, then you approach somebody who you believe have the capacity, you know, has the capacity to approach that person and tell them about the case. There has to be somebody who will remind him. Hmm. Yeah, like I just the truth. Third question is from Brother Saeed. How should we understand the balance between living, uh, living for pleasure of Allah versus uh, permissible risk in the dunya referring to this hadith? Uh, Prophet Wasallam said, I would not like to have gold equal to this mountain of Uhud unless nothing of it remains. Not even a signal. Yes, that hadith. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. That was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not supposed to live like, uh, to live like this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never advised us to live like this. <coughs> I'm sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advises us to live a moderate life. When it comes to infaq and spending, do the spending moderately. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is different. That's why he told Aisha, when he told them to uh, disperse the, the gold in his house, and uh, they did not do. And then he said, what do you expect? What kind of explanation do I have when I meet Allah SWT and these golds are in my house? He's talking about the prophets. That's why they don't leave anything in their life. Whatever they got is supposed to go for charity. But for us, Allah says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And Allah advises us to be moderate. You know, he says, إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا Allah says, وَلَا تَبْسُطْهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ So, taking everything and giving it and then you remain with nothing, this is wrong decision. Allah never advises us to do so. Allah wants us to take some part of our wealth and share with others. And the most important and the most beloved charity we do is when we share with their relatives. If you have children, to leave for them something. And not, when I say something, I mean the vast majority of your wealth should be kept for your children, if possible. You give to others and you leave some for the children. 
You know, so that's how we should maintain the balance. We look into the nusus of the Quran and apply them and apply them correctly. To get idea, spend moderately. Don't exaggerate. Don't go beyond the limit. Rasulullah SAW has different nature in this in this regard. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good. Uh, maybe inshallah when we reach the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wasbil nafsakama alladhina yad'una rabbahum bil ghalat wal ashiyya. We will elaborate more on this matter, inshallah. Next question is from Sister Shifa. Uh, Sheikh, what about someone who fasts but do not do salah? Uh, according to many scholars, if he doesn't pray at all, his fasting is useless. If he doesn't pray at all, his fast is useless. Many scholars. Although some scholars said if he believed in the prayer to be part of the religion but he did not pray, then the fasting is valid. You know, because he's still Muslim, but somebody who is at the edge of going out, you know. But it's a very dangerous situation. You know, I don't know how can, how, how can a person, you know, agree to stay away from prayers, but he fasts. You know. People pray, but they don't fast. But how can they stay away from prayers, but they fast? So this is how we, uh, we look at it. Somebody should really quickly go and remind him that his Islam is shaky. And whether he is a Muslim or not is controversial matter among the scholars. And those who said he is not a Muslim, they also have a very strong evidence to support that. So somebody need to tell him that he is in a very dangerous situation. May Allah guide us. Yes, Suhail. Uh, Sheikh, next question by the same sister is, uh, should a person fast even if they miss Suhail? Yeah. They have to fast. They have to fast. The thing is, they have to make intention. They must fast, even if they miss Sahur. Sahur is not a rukun in fasting. It's not a requirement to say that you cannot fast when you don't have the Sahur. No, it's a sunnah. To do Sahur, you get big reward. But fasting is necessary. Whether you have Sahur or not, you must fast. Hmm. That's all, Sheikh, for today. Okay, so Jazakumullah khairan, insha'Allah. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Bidin Allah Ta'ala. I will meet you on uh, Monday, insha'Allah, uh, to continue with this uh, tafsir. Please don't forget, uh, do a lot for yourself in this month of Ramadan. May Allah SWT accept all of us and be with us wherever we are. إنه بكل جميل كفيل سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته